Hello, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, The Daily Lessons, and today we're on Workbook Lesson 193. All things are lessons God would have me learn. All things are lessons God would have me learn. God does not know of learning, yet his will extends to what he does not understand, in that he wills the happiness his son inherited of him be undisturbed eternal and forever gaining scope, eternally expanding in the joy of full creation and eternally open and wholly limitless in him. That is his will. And thus his will provides the means to guarantee that it is done. God sees no contradictions, yet his son believes he sees them. Thus he has a need for one who can correct his erring sight and give him vision that will lead him back to where perception ceases. God does not perceive at all, yet it is he who gives the means by which perception is made true and beautiful enough to let the light of heaven shine upon it. It is he who answers what his son would contradict and keeps his sinlessness forever safe. These are the lessons God would have you learn. His will reflects them all, and they reflect his loving kindness to the son he loves. Each lesson has a central thought, the same in all of them. The form alone is changed with different circumstances and events, with different characters and different themes, apparent but not real. They are the same in fundamental content. It is this. Forgive, and you will see things differently. Certain it is that all distress does not appear to be but forgiveness. Yet that is the current, uh, current underneath the form. That is the content, rather, underneath the form. It is the sameness which makes learning sure, because the lesson is so simple that it cannot be rejected in the end. No one can hide forever from a truth so very obvious that it appears in countless forms and yet is recognized as easily in all of them if one but wants to see the simple lesson there. Forgive, and you will see this differently. These are the holy words, the Holy Spirit, in all your tribulations, all your pain, and all suffering regardless of its form. These are the words with which temptation ends and guilt abandoned is revered no more. These are the words which end the dream of sin and rid the mind of fear. These are the words by which salvation comes to all the world. Shall we not learn to say these words when we are tempted to believe that pain is real and death becomes our choice instead of life? Shall we not learn to say these words when we have understood their power to release all minds from bondage? These are words which give you power over all events that seem to have given power over you. You see them rightly when you hold these words in full awareness and do not forget these words apply to everything you see or any brother looks upon amiss. How can you tell when you are seeing wrong or someone else is failing to perceive the lesson he would learn? Does pain seem real in the perception? If it does, be sure the lesson is not learned. And there remains an unforgiveness hiding in the mind that sees the pain through eyes the mind directs. God would not have you suffer thus. He would help you forgive yourself. His son does not remember who he is, and God would but have him not forget his love and all the gifts his love brings with it. Would you now renounce your own salvation? Would you fail to learn the simple lessons heaven's teacher sets before you, all, that all pain may disappear and God may be remembered by his son? All things are, God, are lessons God would have you learn. He would not leave an unforgiving thought without correction.
nor one thorn or nail to hurt his holy son in any way. He would ensure his holy rest remained untroubled and serene without care in an eternal home which cares for him. And he would have all tears be wiped away with none remaining yet unshed and none but waiting their appointed time to fall. For God has willed that laughter should, be repl should replace each one and that his son be free again. We will attempt today to overcome a thousand seeming obstacles to peace in just one day. Let mercy come to you more quickly. Do not try to hold it off another day, another minute, or even another instant. Time was made for this. Use it today for what its purpose is. Morning and night, devote what time you can to serve its proper aim, and do not let the time be less than meets your deepest need. Give all you can and give a little more. For now we would rise in haste and go unto your father's house. We may have been gone too long, and we would linger here no more. And as we practice, <clears throat> let us think about all the things we have saved to settle by ourselves and kept apart from healing. Let us give them to all to him who knows the way to look upon them so that they will disappear. Truth is his message. Truth his teaching is. His, his are the lessons God would have us learn. Each hour, spend a little time today and in the days to come in practicing the lesson in forgiveness in the form established for the day. And try to give its application to the happenings the hour brought so that next the next one is free of the one before. Sorry, I paused it there for a minute with that beeping in the background. I hope you didn't hear it, but um, anyway. Oh, the chains of time are easily unloosened in this way. Let no, let no one hour cast its shadow on the one that follows. And when that one goes, let everything that happened in its course go with it. Thus you will remain unbound, in peace, eternal in the world of time. So I'm going to read this paragraph again. I, basically, what, what it's saying is uh, every hour, uh, forgive, forgive it. Forgive the things that have happened in that day. Forgive whatever uh, has gone on. Uh, and to try and do it on an hourly basis. And I'm going to pause this again for a minute because uh, I don't know what's going on outside, but it's, it seems really loud. Okay, I apologize for that. Uh, I think it's the propane guy filling tanks out there. Let me uh, read this paragraph again. Each hour, spend a little time today and in the days to come in practicing the lesson in forgiveness in the form established for the day and try to give it application to the happenings the hour brought so that the next one is free of the one before. The chains of time are easily unloosened in this way. Let no one hour cast its shadow on the one that follows. And when that one goes, let everything that happened in its course go with it. Thus you will remain unbound in peace eternal in the world of time. This is the lesson God would have you learn, that there is a way to look on everything that lets it be to you another step to him and to salvation of the world. To all that speaks of terror, answer thus, I will forgive and this will disappear. To every apprehension, to every care and every form of suffering, repeat these self-same words. And then, you hold the key that opens heaven's gate and brings the love of God, the Father, down to earth at last to raise it up to heaven. God will take this final step himself. Do not deny the little steps he asks you to take to him. I will forgive this 
and this will disappear. Forgive and you will see this differently. So this is really about letting go on a, on a moment to moment basis, not hanging on to things, dragging them forward and letting them influence the next thing that happens. And this is what we've done our whole lives, right? Everything. This is how we've learned. And, and we've, we've laid stones and upon stones to step. Oh, this is what happens when I do this. And so now I'll do this instead. <clears throat> and what we're doing here is we're going to strip all of that away because none of it was true. And what's true is, is that there is divinity in every moment. There is peace and love and harmony in every moment. We just don't look for it. We don't see it. We don't think it's there. We believe it isn't there. And so it isn't there. It's really quite simple. So I really hope you will work with this lesson today and in the days to come, as it says, in practicing the lesson in forgiveness and letting things go. Let's let it go. Um, and if you'd like additional support, you can reach out to me at 907-351-3003, or you can message me on Facebook or on um, YouTube. And hopefully I'll see you here tomorrow for the next lesson. Much love and namaste.